Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Thank you for joining me once again for some afternoon-ish tea. I have a couple stories I wanna to touch on before we dive deep into our main story, but before we do any of that, let me show off what I'm munching on. Today I was lazy and made these awesome Oreo truffles that look classy, but basically just involve cookies, cream cheese, and a blender. And today I'm drinking coffee that I made at home from Beans from Black Kite Coffee, so I'm still supporting local, but Let's face it, I don't have the money to have them make me coffee every single day, but maybe someday I'll get there. A girl can dream. But enough of the nonsense, let's get into the news. On the night of Tuesday, July 28th, into the wee hours of the morning, Wednesday the 29th, shooting stars will glisten in the night sky from not one, but two meteor showers. And I won't tell you what they're called because I can't pronounce it and you're not going to remember anyway. The American Meteor Society said what's notable about this shower is the number of bright fireballs produced during its activity period. But come on, it's 2020 and a wads of fire raining from the sky isn't remotely shocking at this point. The best time to catch a glimpse is around 1 a.m. and the only things you need are a clear view of the night sky without it being tainted by bright city lights, of course, and cloud-free weather conditions. So let's cross our fingers. But maybe you have bigger weekend plans than watching the world burn. And if you're considering going out of state, there are a few things you should consider. Earlier this week, Governor Mike DeWine issued a travel advisory for anyone coming into Ohio from states with a positivity rate of 15% or higher. It doesn't matter if you left for work or for vacation or a free convention. If you are coming into the state of Ohio after being in one of those states, you are encouraged to self-quarantine for 14 days. Right now, the states under the travel advisory are Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Mississippi, Nevada, South Carolina, and Texas. That list will be updated weekly and it's based on a seven day rolling average. So if you're planning a vacay in the near future, stay tuned. <laughs> but on to the main story, we are talking vaccines and herd immunity. And yes, those are two words that tend to get people a little fired up. So let's break things down. What exactly is herd immunity? How do we know when we've reached it? And are we close when it comes to coronavirus? The CDC defines herd or community immunity, which is 10 times more fun to say, as a situation in which a sufficient proportion of a population is immune to an infectious disease through vaccination and or prior illness to make it spread from person to person unlikely. The chief scientist at the World Health Organization estimates that about 50 to 60% of the population will need to be immune to the coronavirus for there to be any protective herd immunity effect. And during a social media event on Friday, Dr. Sumya Swamanathan said that studies done from some countries hit hard by COVID-19 show that just about 5 to 10% of people now have antibodies, although in some countries it has been as high as 20%. In the pandemic's infancy, countries including Britain proposed achieving herd immunity as an outbreak response strategy. But Swamanathan pointed out that doing so with a vaccine is much safer than just letting the virus run amok. You know, like putting a toddler in a high chair to eat instead of handing them a spatula and telling them to fire up the grill. She says that to achieve herd immunity through natural infection alone, you need to have several waves of the virus and you'll continue to see the morbidity and mortality that we're seeing now. Okay, so if vaccines are generally the safer route, how long until we see one for coronavirus? Surprisingly, a vaccine doesn't seem too far away. On Wednesday, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar announced that the U.S. has signed contract with Pfizer for delivery in December of the first 100 million doses of a COVID-19 vaccine that is currently in development. So this agreement is all part of President Donald Trump's Operation Warp Speed vaccine program and okay, we all gotta admit, it's a pretty cool name. Under Operation Warp Speed, multiple COVID-19 vaccines are being developed simultaneously. The program aims to deliver 300 million doses of a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine by January 2021, which is just a few months away. So this Pfizer vaccine is now number five alongside four other potential COVID-19 vaccines that are currently in development. And as early as next week, another vaccine is set to begin final stage testing in a study of 30,000 people to see if it really is safe and effective. Plus a few others have begun smaller late stage studies in other countries. And in the US, a series of huge studies are planned to begin each month through fall in hopes of eventually having several vaccines to use. Okay, so once we get these vaccines, how do they go about getting approved by the FDA? Okay, so each vaccine has to get through three phases. The first involves 20 to 100 healthy volunteers. Researchers here are just looking for some basic things. Does the vaccine work? Is it safe? Are there serious side effects and does the dosage affect those side effects? 
The second phase pumps the gas a little bit here. It involves several hundred volunteers, and at this point, researchers are looking for the most common short-term side effects and how the volunteers' immune systems seem to be responding. And the third phase is big, like the Coachella of medical trials. It requires hundreds or thousands of volunteers. And this is where researchers really start looking at how people who get the vaccine compare to those who don't. But at the end of the day, the only way a vaccine gets approved is if it's deemed safe and effective and if the benefits outweigh the potential risks. But that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you want more information about the stories we talked about, I have a link in the description of this video, including the recipe of my classy Oreo truffles. But if you liked this video and you want to keep on sipping tea with me, you got to hit that like, you got to hit subscribe. You know what you got to do. So I hope you get out there make informed decisions, and I'll see you next time.